All right, guys, welcome back to another video, Shaman J. So today I'm going to give this discussion video that I know eventually would happen. Uh, there's a lot of chatter on the Internet about what's better and what's not. But the great part about this discussion or these discussion type videos is that we all get our own opinion. Now, I'm not biased to the C8 or the C7. I'm actually a little bit biased to the C6, any of the, any of the C6s. The ZR1 is one of my favorites. Uh, and I also like the C5. Um, I would love to own a C6 ZR1, and I probably could grab a C6 for sure, but getting a ZR1, it would be, be pretty difficult because a lot of people might not want to part with that car. Uh, but again, now let me also say this. This is just my opinion. You don't have to agree, and I respect you if you don't agree still. Uh, just, you know, be respectful when you're making your comment. Don't just shoot for the stars and start cursing each other out. You know, the, leave that to the young childish cast to do that, man. You should be able to articulate your point without being aggressive, even in comments. I mean, so that's why I try to get on video and be very respectful uh, towards whatever I'm talking about. So, but I do want to say that, yeah, I'm not biased towards a C8 uh, and um, uh, just because I own one. I actually like pretty much all Corvettes. I just think that it's kind of weird how a lot of C7, some C7 owners are pretty much saying, you know, the C8 isn't worth it and... They've got some some things to say, so I took some notes here, um, and um, <laughs> this is gonna be interesting. Uh, <laughs> I just thought of another one real quick. Um, so the first thing I want to say, one of the main reasons I would tell a person I feel like the C8 is better. Buckle up, this might be a long one. Uh, the, the reason I think the C8 might be better than the C7 is the main reason it's a mid-engine car. So a lot of uh, Corvette enthusiasts uh, wanted a, wanted a mid-engine car at some point, but GM just wouldn't do it. And um, I, I think it's important to note that now that it's here, it's extremely popular, folks. This car is three years old. It's on its fourth generation now. Uh, and... The C8 with the mid-engine is just it, folks. You got to give it up. I've seen comments from C7 owners, and, and you're going to think I'm picking on C7 owners, but the C7 owners are the ones I think are the most boisterous, and they're, they have a lot to say about the C8, even if they don't own it, which is fine. You can make those comments. Um, but it, it seems like this is what fills my feed, I'll say. I'm not going to say all C7 owners, but... It seems like I keep getting a feed full of, well, not a feed full of, but videos are showing up in my feed now that the C7 is better than the C8. And, and I have some choice words to say about that. Uh, now, the, the, the mid-engine thing, folks, this, this is where it's at. There's a reason that the mid-engine, to me, is better because, obviously, it's, it's in the rear. You know what I'm saying? So that, that's going to help you with launching. Uh, the C8 versus the C7 on a launch stock for stock i'm not talking about modified seats you'll get some people that say oh the exhaust is bad da, da, da. okay I, I hear you but stock for stock the c8 will outperform the c7 that is just the way it has to be gm is not going to release a vehicle uh and it, have it be outperformed by the previous generation that's it's not going to happen so when you look at the raw data and you look at the raw numbers from the c7 to the c8 folks you're going to see improvements even if it's just one second, that's an improvement. But one important thing about it being mid-engine is you get the weight distribution. You get a better weight distribution for the vehicle, which in turn, you can launch this bad boy on a dime. The, the, you, you'll see some seats, C8s launching from a stop on Hellcats and leaving them. Now, the Hellcat can catch up if it has more road, but... There's a reason why mid-engine is a much better performing car. So that is the first reason why I feel like the C8 is a much better buy than the C7. Yeah, because there are people that are still buying C7s. And uh, we're going to talk about that too. But the C7 uh, is, is a phenomenal vehicle. Let's not get it twisted. It's a great vehicle. I'm not interested in the C8. I had an option to buy a C7. Nope, not going to do it. Uh, the C8 with the mid-engine folks... It's, it's a game changer. Call it like it would. Call it like it is. It's a game changer. Now, the next thing I wrote down here, I'm hearing, I'm seeing and, and hearing, well, I'm seeing this in comments. And I know the keyboard warriors get in there and they go crazy. Anybody can talk trash in the comments. 
but I've learned that people want to be a part of something. So it just takes for one person to say something derogatory or just way off tilt. And you'll get those people that fanboy, fangirl, and jump right on board. And the, the, a comment that I keep hearing is and seeing is it's a fake Ferrari. A fake Ferrari, folks. This is a stupid comment because I think by now if you're following Corvettes, you know that the 2020 was based off of a Ferrari. How is it a fake Ferrari? It's not a fake Ferrari. It's just a mid-engine Corvette. And I think that's just a silly hate comment. I think it's comical at best. Uh, because if you are a team Corvette, you'll learn to adjust. And I think a lot of, right there, a, a lot, that's a huge problem right there, I think, in, 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 in our culture. We don't want to adjust. We don't want change. To me, this is a great change. It's a great change. So the comments about it being a fake Ferrari, that's just chitter chatter nonsense coming from people trying to hate. That's all that is. It's based off of a Ferrari. That's why they're saying that. If, if it wasn't well known that this car was based off of a Ferrari 458 or a 488, which I think it is, people probably wouldn't be so quick to make that comment. They would just say that Chevy did it better than Ferrari. You know what I mean? That's what they would do. Uh, but, you know, it's not, a, it's not a fake Ferrari in any means. Uh, it is based off of a Ferrari, and that's just what it is. And it's nothing wrong with that. So another reason why I think it's better is it's better looking, in my opinion. And remember, this is just my opinion. You don't have to agree. I personally feel like the C8 is a much better looking vehicle than the C7. The C7 has that traditional long front end, but the C7 from the C6 was a big change and I didn't like that change. I do not like the front end of the C7. It's bubbly and rounded off and cornered off and it's not sharp enough. It's not deep enough with the cuts and the grooves and in comes the C8 which is refined on that. If you look at the front of these cars, the C8 is just a more chiseled jawbone. It's just chiseled out, it's tight, it's firm and where the C7 looks Fluffy. I don't know. I can't put it in words. You know what I'm saying. The C8 is a pointed down like a fighter jet and it is just ultimately refined from the, the C7. And to me, it looks a heck of a lot better. Way better than the C7 by a long shot. Again, that elongated front end from the mid engine, hey, or from, the, from the front mounted engine, it's, it's out with the old and with the new. That's just what it is. You have a much shorter front end, making it much easier to see over the top of the car. And I've, obviously, I've been in these vehicles, even though I don't own the, the C7. Definitely have been in one, and you know, so I, I know what I'm saying here uh, versus the C8. But being able to have that shorter front end, man, and it's chiseled off just right, folks. You got to give credit where credit is due. They did a good job refining that front end because the engine is in the back. Props to him for that. You, you, you have to, you, you have to give it up, man. You, you, you cannot raw numbers and raw paper on, on, on things that are just there in front of you. And again, it's just my opinion. However, you understand what I'm saying when I talk about the front end and the looks of how it, it's, it's just a much better looking car. Now, one thing I will say about the C7 and why Chevy didn't do this and they kind of made it exclusive to the Z06 is they put the quad exhaust on the Z06 and not the C8. When you clearly could have done a quad exhaust on the C8 Stingray. Could have done it. So in that aspect, in that respect, I do like the C7's rear end, but I'm actually used to the C8 and it's fine with me. The C8 has a, again, has that transformer like chiseled off body with the sharp lines all the way around the entire car. It's so, it's phenomenal. Can't deny that's a beautiful looking vehicle, folks. Got to give it up. Now, uh, another thing uh, in comparing stock to stock, apples to apples, again, refinement. The C8 puts down more power, period. Period. 490 and 465. Pretty impressive numbers. Versus the C7, what was it, 455 and 455 or something like that? 455? Those are Camaro numbers by today's standard. That's a That's a... That's a Camaro. My Camaro was 455 and 455 for the LT1. So it's putting down more power. That's not a long drawn out thing to do. It's going to put down more power because GM has to give a little bit more 
for what they're asking for the, what these cars cost and the way it looks it's going and plus the mid-engine alone is going to help you get that power down i mean it, it is what it is so another thing i've learned is that the interior on this car based on my experience definitely has a little bit more room and it's more comfortable because from what i can see on paper the c8 is a bigger car it's bigger all around uh, so obviously you can get some better um, uh, interior room and leg room. This car has more leg room than my, my, my Camaro, my 23 Camaro. That was pretty impressive. And it's really comfortable in comparison to the Camaro. I was kind of surprised at that. I do have the GT1 seats, uh, but all the seats were comfortable. But for a long ride, those GT1 seats are, are pretty comfortable, folks. So when it comes to the interior, you, you definitely have more room in my experience and the way i feel about it and i've seen some c7 owners switch to the c8 and say yeah definitely way more comfortable and i got a ton of room as a matter of fact my seat is not all the way back and i'm 6'4 my seat is forward a little bit it's got some room in there it's got some room now and if you look up older videos on the c7 and when it was first launched you're going to hear gm say oh it's more practical we want to make it more of a daily car that's what they're trying to do well, to me, this is a daily car. There are people that daily drive the C8, and I could see why. Now, personally, I don't daily drive the C8. But when you look at the, the room in the car, I mean, just looking at the, the, the okay, let's just go to the, to the rear of the car first. There, if you don't put your target top in there, or if you have a convertible, either one, they have the same amount of room. Is this the target top? It goes into it locks into place and the Corvette just has that same room open or the convertible has that same room open there But even if you put your top in there like I've done, I'm still able to fit things in there I can fit a lot of stuff back there now what you put back there eh, That's another story you might want to put in, you don't want to put anything that's gonna melt or that, that requires refrigeration I'll say you don't want to do that because it's gonna be it's gonna be cooked by the time you, you get to your house Seriously, it's gonna be done. It's, it's done for so while the C7 was targeted to be a more daily driver for sports and sports car enthusiasts and, um, you know, it's more practical, the C8 is actually way more practical because I have a rear area and I have a ginormous front area. It is gi The front on this car is deep, folks. It is a lot of room in there. I tell you no lies. It is very impressive. I have stuffed luggage in there, gross. I've packed it down with groceries. Really, I did. It's, it's amazing. And didn't even use the rear area. So I think the C7 is a practical vehicle for a sports enthusiast. But in fact, the C8 is a better practical vehicle for the sports car enthusiast. It's just what it is. Again, these are the refinements that GM has done. That's just what it is. Uh, now, the next thing I want to talk about is cost, because here um, is where I think a lot of people uh, have an issue. Yeah, this is where I hear people complaining about the C8, the cost. It's not selling well. It's, it's, it's overpriced. Let me say, I, I say this about not just a C8, respectfully, not trying to insult anybody. If you feel like the car is overpriced, it's clearly not your car. Is that a nice way to say it? If you think that $64,500 for that car, and that's based no options. And if I can remember, the C7 launched at a pretty high price too. It wasn't $40,000 when it launched, right? I don't think it was. You can research that. But I hear a lot of people talking about the price on that car. Now, my car with the options I've got, I got a Corvette 23C8 Corvette Stingray. Uh, the paint was a thousand bucks. The radiator guards were 495, 500 dollars rounded up. And the front and rear splitter, the front splitter and the rear spoiler was 600 bucks, right? My car came to 68,980 bucks, I think it was, before taxes. I don't think that's expensive at all. Just based on everything I just mentioned up to this point, that is why I think that's a good price. Now, granted, I did get mine at MSRP. I didn't pay over. Some people are saying this car isn't worth it, and they're blaming it on the real issue here, which is the dealerships. The dealerships are price gouging out of this world. They're, they're selling the, 
the Z06 version of this car for 100 over. And Stingrays like mine are selling for 20 over. Now, there are people out there that are getting a good deal. Let's be clear. I'm not the only one that got the car at MSRP. Come on. I'm, of course I'm not. I might be one of the few people that got it at MSRP in three months. Holla at you, man. <laughs> got mine in three months flat. Order to front door, three months. I'm still shocked by that. Um, but I'm definitely not the only person who got this vehicle at MSRP, and I won't be the last. Uh, we're, we're in the end of the year, in the end of the third, we're in the third quarter uh, of the year almost. I think it is November, December. Yeah, we're September, October. We're almost almost in the third quarter. We're in September, according to this video. And the 24s are in production, and people are ordering them. We'll start to see videos of people talking about how great the 24 model is. We'll see this, and it's just going to kind of solidify and prove a point that the Corvette is a, the C8 is a sought after vehicle. But in fact, the only thing that might be keeping it out of the reach of a lot of people is those dealer markups. It's not that the Corvette C8 is not selling well. It's just not selling well because dealers are trying to price gouge so much and they're forcing people not to buy. Now, there are some people out there. I don't want to keep calling them suckers, but you just shouldn't pay. Shout out to this one guy. Uh, I'm going to say his name real quick. Um, he just commented recently. Um, let me see his. He commented on another video. Uh, at 30 underscore year underscore accountant. So he's he's um, close to my age. He's uh, 56. He's 5'4", though. Uh, he just got his 23 LT2 uh, convertible Z51 a couple of weeks ago, he says. And um, he paid $900 over, I think it was. Uh, it has 970 miles on it too. It was pre-owned, but he paid 900 over. I think I'm sorry, I can focus as you can see it. There you go. See him right there. Shout out to him. He paid 900 over, and I don't think that's a bad deal. But I think you should determine what's a bad deal. He says I think he got a good deal, and I actually agree. I think he got a pretty good deal for paying 900 over with only 970 miles. That's a lot of car. And again, yeah. You determine what you think is a good deal. That's one of the few deals that I think is a good deal if it's if it's paying over uh, because he got a lot of car right there, man. Um, but I think that's one of the main... If, if I haven't seen a ton of videos on this car isn't worth it, I think it's, gonna, it's coming down to them not being able to get one because of the price and because of the dealers marking the cars up 20 grand, 100 grand. But... The C8 isn't not selling. It's, just, it's, it's out of your reach for whatever reason that you know about. Now, there are some people that are, are when the, even the car not being marked up, saying uh, pre, some previous generation corporate owners saying it's a waste of money and that it's not worth it. I, I, just, I respectfully disagree. Like, this is what we can do. I think a lot of them won't get it because they can't get it. Or it's just out of their reach for whatever reason. I just, I'm trying to be respectful and not say you can't afford it. You can afford whatever you can afford, but whether you choose to get it or not, that's up to you. Most people probably would be honest and say, I just can't afford it. Respect to those people. But if you're just going to complain about, if you're going to make a video complaining about the price of the C8, saying it's trash, it's overpriced, and you're not even talking about markups, clearly this car is not your car. It is out of your reach financially and you should just move on to something else get a pre-owned corvette that's under thirty thousand. they're there with low miles you can they're not as fast and as and don't look like this car or whatever but they're still corvettes you can get a c5 or a c4 for well under thirty thousand with low miles i know i've looked that's what i'm telling you i probably want to grab me a c6 it won't be a zr1 probably but just to get one yeah now, another thing um, besides price I've heard people talk about is they want to roll their own gears. Folks, I've driven a manual. Uh, I've driven a manual for the, for the better part. I've, I've driven a manual for a long time. And I love rolling my own gears too. Love it. But the fact remains, most manuals do not launch well. You need an automatic to launch off the line if you're at the track to really get a good launch. If you can launch a manual, I raced a manual. And so before you start saying, oh, you don't know, no, no, no. My 1LE Camaro was a manual and I launched it off the line just fine. 
but I'm going against an automatic, they're just going to get the better launch. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. Face it. It's the better car to launch. It's face reality. A mid-engine automatic dual-clutch transmission. Some people have some reserves about that transmission. I don't know why. I don't know why. That's a phenomenal transmission. That thing pops and snaps into gear like nothing else. I'm, I'm, and I've been on record telling you I don't like the shifter, the manual. Sh I, I don't like those, but I did it in that car. I put it in in in, in uh, Z mode uh, or track mode, whatever I was driving in. I put it in manual. And I was trying to do those gears because when you put it in manual, it has a shift light. I've never heard anybody talk about the shift light in the in the C8, but it has a shift light. It it'll clearly tell you when to shift. It's just on the dash there. So I was popping through those gears way better than I could ever pop through in a manual. And I know how to drive a manual. I had problems with third gear in my Camaro sometimes, but it seems like that might be a Chevy thing because I was watching another cat with a with a, a Corvette C6 and he was ZR1. He was just didn't want to go into third gear after a while. But nonetheless, it's not a manual gearbox. That's a deterrent for me. Well, I would tell you guys, I get it. You want to roll your own gears. I, I love rolling my own gears too. I love it. From a roll race, you definitely can get the hit. But from a launch, if you don't have, if you don't know how to put that power down, you're going to get walked on the launch next to a, an automatic that can launch very well with a mid engine. It's just going to happen. This is my opinion on it. So, the recapping before I get out of here and then I'll close on one thing I'll close on one thing but I'm gonna recap before I get out of here if you think the C8 is overpriced respect like I just said it's clearly not the car for you if you think it's overpriced if you think it's it's a waste of money it's not your car go get a Honda Civic go, go get something that's 19,000 or something like that whatever I don't know <laughs> but I don't think this car is overpriced and, and I'm not biased to this car. I'm, I'm, I'm a neutral person in general. I try to, I'm going to give praise what praise is due. Uh, but this is the discussion topic on why I think the C8 is much better than the C7. And price-wise, I've seen some used C7 selling for the price of a base brand new Stingray like mine. Like, I'm talking, mine isn't base per se, but like options, it, it's, it's a little bit more. But it is technically a base 1LT. So it just doesn't have the creature comforts, but still, it is 490 horsepower and 465 foot-pounds of torque. I think I'm doing pretty good. That's more than enough car for me not to be at the track every day. And the great part is, I've seen builds on C7s and builds on C8s. You can build this car out now. Um, but again, money-wise, I think that's the main deterrent for a lot of people. People are just complaining about it because they can't reach it. Uh, but and if you can reach it, you're just choosing not to. For whatever reason, we've all got our preferences. But I'm going to say this. The, there are tons of builds on the C8 now that are phenomenal. Twin turbos, superchargers, just killing it, kicking it down the track, if that's your audience. I'm not personally wanting to do a supercharger and twin turbo. I don't need all that. I like that car. Like it's beautiful, just as it is. It's you know, it's nice. And also, I actually drive my car. I don't plan on having that car sit in the garage. I paid all that cash for that car. I'm not gonna let it have to sit in the garage. I'm done. Also, just driving it on the weekends. I drive it any day of the week now that it's sunny. Well, it's always sunny here and always hot. So what I'll do sometimes is I'll pull that car out of the garage after eight o'clock or seven forty-five when the sun's down. Probably go for a workout and then shower and then jump in the car and go for a quick ride, man, to cool off. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. If you have a Corvette, no matter which Corvette you have, drive it. One thing I hear people talking about with the C8 is resale value. Well, it's not going to resale value. It's not going to have a good resale. I didn't buy that car to resell it. I bought it to drive it. It's an amazing vehicle. If I lay out a C6 and a C7, I want to take the C6. If I lay out a C6 ZR1 with a C8, I'm going to take the C6 ZR1. I'm, I can't help it. The C8 is an amazing vehicle, folks. And if you own a C7, enjoy your car. 
what happened to Team Corvette? We're all on the same team. But I do get that we have a difference of opinion. And we can all respectfully agree to disagree. But there's no way that I would take a C7 over a C8 on its worst day. No freaking way. This car is borderline supercar. And it definitely has an exotic look to it. That alone commands respect when I pull it out of the garage. Yeah. It's your man Jay. If you guys enjoyed, discussion video is over. Take care.